Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about the Paltrow trial again <laughs> and how these folks are driving me crazy. <laughs> I think at the end of this we're all going to need to chip in and buy the entire jury a beer. Let's head on down to the beach and talk about that. The live stream yesterday went for over 10 hours, and there were only a few salient moments that I thought needed to be discussed, and so I have clipped those, and we'll talk about them. This is not going to be as long a video as the other videos have been, simply because um, apparently the theme of yesterday was, let's torture the jury. I want to go through a couple of things that are sort of ground rules for conducting a successful trial. <laughs> One of them is don't torque off the jury. And in order not to do that, <clears throat> what you have to do is you have to keep things moving, keep your, your pace up, your tone up, and not let evidence presentation drag. Now, a deposition that is taken prior to trial can be used for uh, any purpose if it's a deposition of a party. And most good trial lawyers at this stage of the game take video depositions. And the reason they take video depositions is because you just never know. Sometimes a witness will experience a sudden heart attack and die at the age of 40. And all of a sudden you are left only with his paper deposition. If that happens, then you have to do sort of what they did here with Moses' deposition. I'm on page seven. As you know, we're talking about this ski collision that occurred about four and a half years ago. Are you familiar with that? Yes. And I'm gonna pick up where I was. Do you recall how old you were at the time? Nine. Okay, and you recall this ski trip in February of 2016, correct? Yes. There are a few rules also with regard to getting witnesses to trial. I don't know if this might have been a strategic decision to put on Moses' deposition instead of his actual live testimony. Maybe he did not hold up well under cross-examination at the deposition. Maybe there were things that uh, they could have gotten into on cross-examination there that they didn't find out about until later. I don't know exactly what the reason is, but they must have had some reason for not bringing him live. But they didn't have a reason for not doing his videotape deposition. Now, videotape depositions cost more than regular paper depositions do, the ones where you get a transcript. But the bottom line is they are far more valuable because then you don't have to go through the process of having somebody read the question and read the answer, because this is about as boring as watching paint dry. That's why I used such a small clip here of Moses. And then they did the same thing with uh, Apple's deposition. Let's watch. Okay, do you recall which ski instructors were there? Again, I remember um, Carrie, my instructor, Preston, who skied with BF and IF, Eric, and I believe that there was one more um, female instructor, but I can't fully recall. Okay. Do you recall anyone else uh, be besides the people you've mentioned at the side of the commotion? No. This is just not good trial practice. Again, I don't know if there was a strategic reason for doing this or if whether because Ms. Paltrow is doubtless being defended by an insurance company, those guys were just too cheap to pay for a video deposition. I'm not sure which it is. But when you have somebody who's reading depositions like this, and Mr. Owens apparently cannot read very well. He can't read for, uh, for presentation. You know, if you listen to the people who do audiobooks, those are people who do audiobooks quite well, but they also have a way to pause in between and go back and erase pretty much the way I do my videos. There are a lot of dumb things I say in between the salient comments that I come out with, 
And when I do my editing, I go, oh gosh, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. So I cut it out. Well, the problem is when you get up in front of a jury, you can't go, oh, my bad. What happens is you get someone reading like this, and then you get the answer like this. And you may as well just give everybody a Valium because they're all going to be unconscious. Their eyes are going to glaze over and they're going to think about the last time they went trout fishing. So again, you have if, if you're a good lawyer, you anticipate problems at trial. And by anticipating problems at trial, you don't have problems at trial. And it's fairly apparent here that they did not anticipate that Apple and Moses would not be available or would not be called at trial. Now, was their tep deposition testimony helpful? Obviously, they felt it was helpful or they would not have put those two people up there reading the deposition. But what you have to be careful of when you do that is that things don't drag. And unfortunately, yesterday, things dragged. And look at it this way. I'm, I'm saving you a lot of pain watching that entire 10-hour uh, live stream. And for those of you who watched the entire 10-hour live stream, you have my condolences. The one good moment that I saw in the trial was the uh, testimony of the biomechanics expert. Let's look at that now. Um, he uses the velocity here, the 2.29, that has the one half in this. So if we go to the next page, yeah. So you can see he's using the wrong velocity. What happens is if you use the wrong velocity in here, let's do BAMES as, call this wrong. So what you get is one half mass times one half acceleration times time. Oops, that's squared, there we go. Divided by distance and there. Uh, correct is one half mass. Acceleration times time squared. So that one half goes into this equation. What does that mean? That means that this half gets squared. It becomes one fourth. So the force that Dr. Bame calculated for this landing was actually one fourth of the force he should have calculated. Okay, he just went through all of those calculations, and I think he did a really fine job of doing that. Now let's watch him go through the animation. Maybe, maybe start from the beginning and just play it. Objection lacks foundation for trajectory, speed, and direction. Overruled. It's a demonstrative of this witness's testimony only. All right, thank you. Okay. This and, is sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Doctor. This is from the the beginning. And if there's anything you want to comment on as it happens, feel free. that accurately reflects the version that Ms. Paltrow testified to that matches the laws of physics and biomechanics as I understand them. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. So, Dr. Scherer, maybe since we've already gone through this, this slow motion, let's just play this one from the start and then you can add anything that you can provide to the jury from this angle. Sure. Here, let's play first and then there we go. I'll wait until the contact point. So it's coming up. Here we go. There's contact. Fall to the right. This one doesn't show the rotation quite as much, and we don't know the amount of counterclockwise rotation as well. There could be a little. There could be more or less. Right. But we're not sure. But if you if you go backwards a little bit uh, in, into the moment of the collision. This one maybe shows, uh, does this one show the skis coming between the skis? Yes, it does. And now the jury has seen the complete animation, including the intersection of the two skiers and 
you have an expert explaining the biomechanics of how when those two skiers were together, how they managed to fall in such a way that um, Mr. Sanderson sustained uh, rib injuries. And I think he did it in a, in a much better and much clearer way than Dr. Gibby did it for the plaintiff. So we'll have to see, I guess, how the jury interprets all of this, but it looked to me like he did a much better job. At their core, trials are about who can tell the story better. Who can tell the story in the most believable fashion? And you have to be a good storyteller as a trial attorney. And in order to do that, there needs to be some linearity to the storytelling. You have to have a start, a middle, and an end. And the way this trial has been chopped up with different witnesses coming on different days, perhaps that could not have been helped. And perhaps, uh, you know, it could have been helped if they had taken videotaped trial depositions of all of these witnesses, but apparently they did not do that. And so, for that reason, I think that essentially the side that in the period of time where they're telling the story tells the story better is ultimately going to prevail. And I'll leave that uh, analysis to all of my very brilliant uh, subscribers who have contributed greatly to the success of this channel. And, and you've made some tremendous comments. I wish I had time to get to all of them, but I try to get to as many of them as I can. So that's where we are today. It'll be interesting to see how things go at the trial today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have an opportunity today, do something kind for someone, and I'll catch you down here at the beach next time. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.